back to physics through computational thinking. Today we are going to talk about improved Euler method. Last time we looked at Euler method and we saw that it takes to get an accurate calculation it takes a long time. So we'll look at the improved Euler method which can get us desired accuracy in less number of steps or less number or, or for a larger value of the step size h. We'll further improve this method using um, by using Runge-Gutta fourth order method. Runge-Gutta fourth order method can get you even higher accuracy with even a larger step size and we'll compare these methods for solving ordinary differential equations so this will be the target of this particular lecture so let's go ahead and get started so improved Euler method has a local error of order h cube and global error of order h square in comparison to Euler method, which has a local error of order h square and a global error of order h, this is slightly better because the local error here is order h cube and global error is order h square. So let's see how is Euler, improved Euler method defined. We're not going to give you a proof of this, but we'll illustrate it through a graphical image. So the the notice the difference in comparison to the Euler method. Time increment happens in the same way as the Euler method. And in the Euler method, we de determined the next value of x by adding to xn the previous value of x, h times the derivative, evaluated the previous value t and xn. So, this was the Euler method. The first two lines define the Euler method. In the improved Euler method, what we do is we take we, we, we take uh, we, we determine xn plus 1 by adding to xn an improved value of the derivative. The improved value of the derivative is obtained by the value of the derivative at the previous point t and xn plus the value of the derivative at the new point tn plus 1 and xn tilde plus 1 x tilde n, pl n plus 1 x tilde n plus 1 is the the value of x that is determined by the Euler method. So, so this is the value of derivative at the previous point and here we have got the value of the derivative at the point which is determined by the Euler method. We take the average of these two points and then multiply it by the step size h and that gives me the step in x. I add that to xn plus one, xn and that gives me the value of x n plus 1 according to the improved Euler method. Now, the value of x n plus, x n plus 1 determined this way is more accurate than value of the x n plus 1 determined by the Euler method that is by this step. I will give you a graphical proof of this or graphical illustration of this rather. So, let us go ahead and take a look at that. So, let us take x axis as time axis and y axis as the x axis and we want to find the solution from some ti to tf. Now, let us say our solution, let us say our true solution that is something that we let us assume to already know and the true solution let us say it looks like that from ti to tf and this is some value of tn. This is Tn and corresponding to that, this is Xn and I want to determine the next value that is at Tn plus 1. So, this is Tn plus 1, the distance between Tn and Tn plus 1 is h and I want to determine the value of the function over here using the derivatives. So, I for the problem. The ODE, I know the derivatives, I do not know the true function, but for the illustration purpose, I am drawing the true function, assuming that I know it. So, let us go ahead and see what Euler's method does and then we will compare with improve Euler's method. In the Euler's method, we take the derivative at Tn, the derivative is this, we multiply that derivative by h. So, we, so, so, multiply the derivative by h that gives us the segment delta x this is h times f evaluated at 
Tn and Xn and that gives me the height change or the step size and so from this point of view my determined value of Xn is over here. In fact, in order to make it more dramatic so that you can see the difference, let's go ahead and, and make this curve have a higher gradient. So let's go ahead and let's say the function goes like that. And at this point, Tn, the derivative goes like that. And for distance h, this is h, I go ahead and I calculate delta x. So my new value, this is, this is my value according to Euler method. So the improved Euler method says that just don't take the first derivative but also take another derivative. So this was the derivative because the blue line is the oil derivative because of at the previous point but improved Euler method says that take also the derivative, take also the second derivative which is evaluated at tn plus 1 and x tilde n plus 1. So this is tn plus 1 x tilde n plus 1 at this point the derivative has has the value given by this line then the Euler's method says that find the average of these two derivatives so which is given by the red line over here so let me label this this is this is derivative at t n x n this is derivative at t n plus 1 x n plus 1 tilde and this is the average of the two or the average of the two we take the average of the two we translate that to the point over here to the previous point and then we multiply the step size h in it and that gives me a value over here which ends up being closer to the true value. So let me do this again. Let me go ahead and erase this whole thing and let me do this demonstrate this again. Let's say this is the function. Let's let's make h very big so that it's more clear. This is my point Tn and let's take Tn plus 1 farther away. This is Tn plus 1. So Euler's method says take the derivative over here, take the h, multiply by that. And this is the predicted point, new predicted point by the Euler's method. So this is the solution because of Euler's method. Now, the improved Euler's method says that also take the derivative at this point, this point that is a tn plus 1. So let me actually correct that. So at tn plus 1, the function's value is over here. So let me take the derivative at this point. Then find the average of the two derivatives, which is this. Translate that to this point and then multiply by h, which is the distance h 
So therefore, it lands up somewhere over here. So you see that the blue value and this blue dot and this green dot, blue dot is farther away from the true value where the green dot is solution or predicted point because of improved Euler's method and this is much closer to the true solution. So we see that improved Euler's method can significantly improve over the, over the Euler's method and this is the gist of it. You take derivative at the previous point, derivative at the predicted point and then calculate a new derivative, the average of these derivatives and then take, predict the point again because of this average derivatives and this new value turns out to be much more accurate. All right, so let's go back and see how to implement this. This is my improved Euler's method. I can also write improved, improved Euler's method in the following way. In so tn plus one is tn plus h as before, and xn plus one is given by xn plus h times this fraction. Where this fraction is average of two derivatives. The first one determined at the previous point, and the second one determined at tn plus h and xn plus f times h plus f evaluated at tn plus xn where this is nothing but xn plus 1 determined by the Euler's method. So we can go ahead and implement this in one thing we can write this in a single line and this is what we will use to implement and our implementation is very similar to what we have done before. So this time I will call the functions improved Euler method uh, just to make a note that Improved Euler method is also known as the second order Runge-Kutta method. So to, improve, to define improved Euler method, we will work exactly as in the case of the Euler method, but we will make one distinction. We will introduce two more, few more variables, local variables in the module construct. We will introduce next one, next, rate one and rate. So let us let's see how this works. H is calculated as before, Tf minus Ti over n max, initialization of data list is as before, condition checking is as before and incrementation is also as before to data list we add the next point but in the body we calculate the next point and this is how we do it. These are the four steps of the body or five steps of the body which is where we are calculating the next step. So first in order to calculate the next step we find out the previous step, previous step is the last element of data list then we calculate the rate but using the through function applying f on the previous point, f is the set of derivatives, applying it on the previous point, then next is determined by, next one is determined by previous plus h rate, this is nothing but the determination because of Euler method. Now we determine a, a new rate called the rate 1 by finding out the derivative at the point next one using through function f applied at next one and then we find the next point according to improve Euler method by taking the average of the rate and rate one and multiplying by h and adding previous to it. Once you have got that in over here it is appended to data list and so on. So this is the implementation of Euler method the only changes here in the body and we return the data list. So let me go ahead and execute that and that defines my Euler method. Let us go and check out this Euler method if it provides significant improvement over improved Euler method if it provides significant improvement over Euler's method. So here is the application of improved Euler method for solving the damped oscillator. Just to remind you damped oscillator equation was dq by dt equal to i and di by dt equal to minus l, l by r square c q minus i. This is the term that is responsible for oscillation and minus i is responsible for damping initial conditions was q at 0 is 1 and i at 0 is 0 and we decided to take the ratio l by r square c as w and we chose a large value of w, w much much greater than 1 by 4. So this is what we have taken from our code that we wrote last time. So we, we, cal we take w equal to 10, beta is w square root of w minus 1 by 4 and then rest is same as before. We define the identity function 
the charge dot and the current dot and the initial value at t equal to 0 q is 1 and current is 0 and now we will calculate data with improved Euler function that we have just defined rather than Euler general function that we defined last time. So let me go ahead and do that and when I do this here is what I get. So let me go ahead and this time evaluate or calculate my data points using the improved Euler method. This is same call as before except that rather than using the other general method, I am using the improved Euler method. So let me go ahead and execute that and then I am going to do a comparison of plots over here and we see that there is a fantastic agreement between the red curve and the black curve where red curve is the expected solution and black curve is the numerical solution that we have obtained using the improved Euler method. Just to show you that what happens when we use the Euler general method that we used previous last time, you see that we get a poor agreement for n max equal to 100. Notice that we are using n max equal to 100, we are getting a poor agreement with Euler general function. We had to go to higher value of n max with the Euler general function to get some kind of agreement. But the moment we go to improved Euler method, we can do this with much lesser points. With only about 100 points, we can get a fantastic agreement, much better agreement with the expected curve compares to the Euler improved method, which completely fails, oh, sorry, Euler general method, which completely fails for 100 points. To show you again, this is the Euler general method with n max equal to 100 and tf equal to 10. Therefore, h is 0.1. For h equal to 0.1, we see that the original method gives me an oscillation without any damping, which is completely incorrect, while all improved method gives a fantastic agreement. You can play around with this. We can also compare the current. So, this is the code for current where I, I extract from data time and the the, the first and the third component or the first and the third column and that also is in fantastic increment. So this is current versus time and this is charge versus time. So let's go ahead and try a different value of w. Let's go ahead and say make w equal to 20 so that we see a few more oscillations. We'll keep n max as 10 as 100 and tf as 10. Let's go ahead and try this out and we see that this is again is in good agreement but now that the number of oxidations are higher we need to increase this further so let's go ahead and make this 200. So with n max equal to 200 let's go ahead and try this out and we see there's a fantastic agreement again. Now this is something that will be impossible with the general method. So you see that other improved method provides significantly significant improvement over Euler general method or Euler method. So let us go ahead and further improve this using the fourth order Runge-Kutta method. Fourth order Runge-Kutta method is generalization of improved Euler method or the second order Runge-Kutta method. In fourth order Runge-Kutta method local error goes like order h to power 5 while the global error goes as order h to power 4 and that is the reason this is called the fourth order Runge-Kutta method. The global error reduces down to h to power 4. So in the Euler method it is h, in improved Euler method or second order Runge-Kutta it is h square and the fourth order Runge-Kutta method is h4. The idea behind the fourth order Runge-Kutta method is similar to the improved Euler method. Again we find a more accurate value of the derivative that will give me a better prediction for the next evaluation of the of the step size. So, this is how it works in one dimension. Tn plus 1 is defined as Tn plus h. Then we calculate k1 which is h times f evaluated at Tn xn. So, this is the delta x expected delta x. Then we calculate k2 which is h times f evaluated Tn plus h by 2 and xn plus half of k1. 
So K1 was the step in delta in, in x, it was expectation in delta x or it was an estimation of delta x and that estimation of delta x is being used here to evaluate new value of K2. So K2 is again, an, again another estimation of delta x. Then that is used to evaluate K3. K3 is again evaluated at Tn plus H by 2 and Xn plus half K2 where K2 was another expectation or another estimation of delta x. And then K4 is evaluated at Tn plus H and Xn plus K3. So this is another, so K3 was another estimation of delta x so, and K4 is another estimation of delta x. So there are four different estimations of delta x are calculated over here k1 k2 k3 and k4 then xn plus 1 is evaluated as taking the weighted average of these four expectations of delta x or four estimations of delta x k1 k2 k3 and k4 so weighted average k1 has a multiplier factor 2 k2 is a multiplier factor k1 has a multiplier factor 1 k2 and k3 is a multiplier factor 2 and k4 has a multiplier factor 1 we add all the k's and then divide by 6, this is the weighted average of all those estimations of delta x, we add that to delta x and that gives me determination of xn plus 1. So we are not going to present any proof of this, even graphical representation is a bit tricky, but you are invited to try out your own graphical representation. One can prove this mathematically, but the proof is extremely lengthy. So what we are going to do is, we are not going to go over the mathematical proof, it is not in the interest of this course. But what we'll do is we'll take this for its face value, we'll evaluate it in and try it out and see how it provides an improvement. So let's go ahead and implement this. In order to implement this, what we'll do is we'll redefine this Runge-Kutta method in the following way. In terms of rather than estimations of delta x, what we'll do is we'll define in terms of rates because that's how we have implemented our code. So what we'll do is we'll, de we'll define R1 as K1 over H that is R1 is my first uh, rate that is evaluated at T and Xn. Then R2 is another estimation of rate that is evaluated at Tn plus H by 2 and Xn plus H by 2 times R1, H by 2 times R1 or H times R1 is an estimation for delta X. Then R3 is again Tn plus H by 2 and Xn plus H by 2 times R2 and R4 is K4 by H which is F evaluated Tn plus H and Xn plus H times R3. So now taking these four rates, we will find a weighted average of rates by using this formula, multiply that with H and add to Xn. So let us go ahead and use this to implement our code. Now this was done for a one dimensional problem, for a general n dimensional problem we have got multiple dynamical quantities and our equation can be written in the matrix form as x dot equal to fx as we discussed before and we can take x is the transpose of t x y z etc. Then RK4 method we can write in terms of this matrix equation as follows R1 is f evaluated at xn. R2 is F evaluated at Xn plus H by 2 times R1, R3 is F evaluated at Xn plus H by 2 times R2 and R4 is F evaluated at Xn plus H R3. Then we calculate Xn plus 1 as weighted average of these four rates where each of these rates is a matrix or column vector and we multiply that with H add it to Xn. So that gives us Xn plus 1. So let us go ahead and implement this. RK4 method to do that I am going to clear everything that is in there. This clear command just takes care of the fact that older definitions are all, all erased just in case there are some older definitions that can conflict with what we are going to do now. So just erase all the older definitions that are stored in mathematical context called global. This will clear that up and then we will go ahead and define RK4 method. So here is RK4 method, this is pretty much the same as the Euler method or the Euler improved method. The only difference here is that is going to be in the body again. So let us just review the body part. 
is the body of the for loop which has been changed. So, previous value is the last of the data list. Rate 1 is f applied on previous, rate 2 is f applied on previous plus h by 2 times rate 1, rate 3 is f applied at previous plus h by 2 times rate 2, and rate 4 is f applied at previous plus h times rate 3. And then we take the weighted average of the rates, multiply by h, and add to the previous. So, it is as simple as that. Go ahead and write down this code yourself and implement it. And once you are done, you can we can test it out. So this is a pretty much straightforward generalization of of the Euler method. So let me go ahead and execute that. So that's loaded in the context. And let's go ahead and when you are ready, let's go ahead and So before we actually try it out, I want to simplify a few things. So we'll what we'll do is we'll do an alternative implementation. We'll do an alternative implementation of the RK4 method. To do that, so let's go back to the RK4 method and I want to show you something. So you see that I'm using the true function and f applied. I take previous and all these other things and take their arguments and apply f on that. This is an alternate way of writing this body, which is somewhat simpler and also slightly more general because we are working with vectors here. Previous is a vector, rate is a vector. So, in order to actually make things slightly simpler, what we will do is we will do an alternative implementation. To do this alternative implementation, we will see the multiple ways of defining a function that is the same result, but there are multiple ways we can define it in Wolfram language and we will make use of that. So, here is an example of a definition of a function of t and x. Let us say function of t and x is minus x t. We can make the same alternate definition in the following way. We can define function rather than has two argument t and x. We can have one argument to the function that is a list, but this list can have two elements t and x. And both of the functions are defined the same way. And you can let me go ahead and execute this. Then when you calculate call a function of 1, 2 with two arguments 1 and 2, it will use the first definition and give me a evaluation of 2. We can go ahead and change it to 3 and function of 3, 2 will give me minus 6, minus 3 times 2. But if I pass this function, the arguments 1 and 2 inside a list, it is going to give me this definition and I can go ahead and execute this. You know, if you want to test it out that these two actually are different, we can make this x plus t. So, when I cal call the function f with two argument uh, with a single argument that is a list, but the list containing two elements, I will get x plus t which is 1 plus 2 that is 3. At the same, now if I add another third argument, this is going to give me just the same thing back because this has not been defined in the context. We have defined function as a single argument that is a list which contains two elements and that has been defined as x plus t but we have never defined a function with three arguments. So, there are multiple ways of defining a function and since we are working with vectors, what we will do is we will use this vector definition where we pass a single vector to the function and define a function in terms of its arguments or the elements of the list. So, to do that, but what we can also do is we can define a vector function that is a function is the argument of the function is a vector and also its output is a vector. So, we can for example, this is a definition where the argument function is a list t x, it has got two elements and then the output is in a list of three elements x t, x plus t and x minus t. So, let us go ahead and try this out and when we do this, we get x times t 1 and times 2 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3 and 2 minus 1 is 1, you can go ahead and change that to 2 and the result changes to 4, 4 and 0. When now this is a list of 3 elements, this is a vector. So, my input to a function is also a vector, and my output of the function is also a vector. So, vector goes in, vector comes out. So, therefore, this is a definition of a vector function and this is what we are going to use in order to define the problem that we are working on 
and this when we do this we can avoid the through function by putting in a vector and getting out a vector. So what we'll do is we'll define our derivative function in the following fashion. So derivative function will have an argument. If it's a two-dimensional problem, it will have arguments a list of t, x, and y, and the output will be one because time derivative is constant. That's one derivative of time with respect to itself is one. Then x dot is some function f of t, x, y, z, and y dot is some function of g, some function g of t, x, y, z. So let's go ahead and clear the global context again just because you're going to define the RQ4 method again. So once we once I clear the, the global context, previously defined RQ4 is, is, is gone and what we'll do is we'll redefine the RQ4 and again this time the change is in the body. So let's go ahead and look at the body. This is the body. Now you see I don't need to use a through function. I can take the F and directly apply it as a single argument to previous the list goes as a single argument to f and the output of this is going to be a list before I needed to use a through function to get an argument as a list or get the output as a list but I don't need to do that now because my f has been defined I'm assuming that my f is defined in, in this fashion which is something like this a list goes in and a list comes out so therefore I can simply take f and apply it on the single argument previous Again, I can take f and apply on this at a different point, and then again rate 3 in the same fashion and rate 4 in the same fashion, and then I finally calculate the weighted average of rates multiplied by h and add it to previous, and that gives me the new definition of RQ4. So let me go ahead and execute it. And is this new definition of RQ4 that I'm going to use? This is how we'll apply it. So let's go ahead and we'll go back to the problem we're working on the damped oscillator. For the damped oscillator, let's take w equal to 10, beta equal to square root of w minus 1 by 4. The difference here is this time we'll define the rate function, which is argument of t, x, and v as, or, or this is this is actually the current. So the notation we were following was this was charge and this was current. So rate function is, is a function of time, charge and current and time dot is 1, charge dot is, is current and current dot is minus w times charge and minus current. This is what we are doing. So now rather than defining three different rate functions for three different quantities, we will define a single rate function for time, charge and current as a, as a three tuple. The first element is 1, the second is current and current dot is minus w times charge minus current. And the initial condition is again a vector at t equal to 0, charge is 0 and current is also 0 and the solution of this equation is e to minus t by 2 cos beta t. So let me go ahead and evaluate that. We'll call the variable data 4 and in, in, in that we'll, we'll call the RQ4. RQ4 is now called with the with rate function. Rate function is the set of functions which define the rate for charge, current and time. The initial condition which contains the initial time, the initial value of charge and current, final time tf and number of points and max. So let's start with a small number of points, let's say 10. So let's go ahead and execute it. And you see this works, does not work, this is very poor because h is 1, ti minus tf is 10, 10 over 10 is 1. We are taking too few points. Let's increase the number of points to 20 and see what does that do and you see that has already done significant improvement with just 20 points. RQ4 method is already giving me almost the shape of the true solution. Let me go ahead and increase this to 40 and you see that this is pretty much the shape of the solution. We go ahead and make it something like 70 and 
you see that this is a pretty good agreement at 100 this will actually be fantastic so let's go ahead and compare this with other methods so with rq4 you see with only 100 points i'm going to get a very reasonably good result so let me go ahead and, and check this out for Euler method. So again, we'll define the Euler method in the same way as we have defined the RK4 method. That is, we'll get rid of the through function and we'll have a rate function which whose output will be a vector. It'll give me rate of all the quantities. So again, the body of the Euler method has been changed in the following way. We are redefining the Euler method so that we can use the same structure for f, that is the rate function. And again, all that we have done here is just change the, up the, the calculation of the next point is previous plus h times f at previous. This is the Euler method. So let me go ahead and execute it. And improve Euler or the second order of Renjikuta method, which I'm going to call now as RK2. This RK2 method I'm going to redefine, and this time the body changes in the following fashion. I've got rid of the through function and f at at operation. It's just f at previous, f at previous plus h times rate 1. These are the two rates. Take the average of the rates, multiply with h and add to previous. And that is my improved other method. So let me also execute this and load it into the context. So now that I've defined the Euler method, RK2 method, and the improved Euler method, all four of them in the same style, let me go ahead and do a comparison of all these methods. So let me go ahead and do the comparison of all these methods. So the same problem. So I'll copy this part of the problem. And let me put this at the end. add this at the end over here okay so here is my definition of the problem again i'm choosing the same set of parameters w equal to 10 same rate function same initial condition the solution is also same now rather than doing rk4 i can go ahead and try rk2 method and euler method so let me just go ahead with euler method first with Euler method 100 points, let's see what happens. You see, this is what happens with Euler method 100 points. We just tried this some time ago. Euler method with 100 points works very poorly. Improve Euler method or RK2 method that we've defined with 100 points works reasonably well. And RK4 method also works reasonably well. And in fact, RK4 method also works with lesser number of points, maybe at 50. So here's RK4 at 50. So let's go ahead and do this comparison again. So RK4 at 50, 70. So let's go ahead and do this. So RK4 it's at 70 is pretty much as good as as Euler, improved Euler method or RK2. So let's go ahead and see this at for the Euler method again. In order to get a good solution with Euler method, I require at least a thousand points. Even with a thousand points, I'm not getting a perfect agreement. But with RK2 method, I can get a reasonably good agreement at just at 100 points. And with RK4 method, we can do at even lesser number of points. So 70, you can get a pretty good agreement at 70. Let's do understand this comparison even better between these three methods by taking another example. Now we'll compare the various methods, Euler method. Euler, improve Euler or RK2 and RK4 method, both are the method. These various algorithms using driven oscillator. Driven oscillator is something that we have covered in a different video. So go ahead and watch that. But here's a quick recap of the driven oscillator. The equation of motion of driven oscillator is given by this equation over here, which is the first part of this equation is simply the equation of the simple harmonic oscillator to which we have added an external force. So this is an oscillator, which is a simple harmonic oscillator, but an external force applied to drive it. 
and when we non-dimensionalize it, this equation reduces down to uh, to this equation where all the parameters, external parameters m, k, and f are gone, and we are only left with a single parameter omega. Here, x, t, and omega are dimensionless quantities. When we reduce down this equation of motion, second order equation of motion to first order coupled ODEs, that is x dot equal to v and v dot equal to minus x plus cos omega t, we can use this to implement the, on the computer and or the, or for, for the various methods that we have done. So, this is our set of first order ODEs. The solution of this equation of motion is given by this solution over here, which we'll, what we will do is we will quickly check. So, here is our equation and we are claiming that this is the solution. So, in order to check that, what we will do is we will use Mathematica's built in method for calculating the derivatives. So, here is my claimed solution. So, this claimed solution is I am going to write as omega square is minus omega square by 1 minus omega square. Take this guy, multiply this with cos t to this add. plus 1 by 1 minus omega square and then multiply that with cos of omega t. That is our claimed solution. This is what we are claiming that as a solution and in order to verify that this is actually the solution of this differential equation, we are going to calculate the second derivative of this solution with respect to time. In order to calculate the second derivative, we'll use the Mathematica's built-in function called d, which calculates the derivative. To calculate the single derivative with respect to time, we'll just tell that this is the function. First argument of d is function. The second argument is derivative with respect to the variable. So, variable is t. So, first derivative with respect to t is given by d f comma t and that gives me this, but I am interested in the second derivative for that. I will tell the d function that t is the argument, but I want the second deriv derivative by putting all both these things in the list. The first argument is of this list is first element of this list is t, second element is the order of the derivative. When I do that, I get the second derivative. Now, if to the second derivative, I add x let us move this minus x to the left hand side, it becomes dx square by dt plus x and that should be equal to, to cos omega t. So, let me go ahead and add this solution to this derivative. So, I take this, add this solution to this derivative and when I execute this, I get this sum and if you look at this sum, this sum can simplify further. Let me okay, one, once again go ahead and apply postfix simplify on this Mathematica's inbuilt ability to simplify equations. So, let me go ahead and simplify that and all we are left with cos of t omega. So, d, is, d square x by dt square plus x is cos of t omega. Therefore, the claimed solution that we have given over here is actually the solution of this equation. This was just a quick cross check of, of the of this solution. Now, let us go ahead and implement this. What we will do is when omega is close to 1, you see there is a divergence and that is called as resonance. The amplitude becomes very large as omega approaches 1. So, what we will do is we will work with some value of omega close to 1. So, in this example, what we have done is we, we have taken omega equal to 0 0.8 and then we define the rate function. So, we will take our free parameter omega equal to 0 0.8 and take the rate function uh, as the argument of rate function is the vector t x v and the value of this function is also the vector 1 v minus x plus cos omega t where 1 is the rate of time and x dot is v. So, that is why we have got the second argument is v and v dot is minus x plus cos omega t that is why we have got the third, third element over here is minus x plus cos omega t. So, that is our rate function for the post oscillator or the driven oscillator and then the initial condition here is 0 1 0 that is at t equal to 0 x is 1 and v is 0. So, that is we take the force oscillator we start out from extreme position or extended we, we extend the oscillator 
away from the mean position when we release it under the force f cos omega t. The solution is as we discussed is, is been given over here. So, this is our initialization of the problem. So, let us go ahead and execute that. Then we want to take T f equal to 100 and max equal to 500 and for these two values for this value of Tf and, and max, I want to find the solution using the Euler method, RK2 method and RK4 method. And again, you see, we have, we have defined the functions in the same way. So, we are using the same argument, same structure. So, Euler function is, is called with rate function, the initial condition Tf and N max. RK2 is called with again the same arguments, so RK4 is called with the same argument. So, we are keeping a Tf and N max fix. So, let us go ahead and execute this. So, T f is 100 and max is 500. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to make a make a list plot of all of all three of these. In order to do that, I am going to use the table construct. So, this part of the table construct makes a list plot for and compares it with the solution and to for, for the for this variable data, I am passing three possible choices. So, table runs on the variable data where data takes the value data 1, data 2 and data 4 and data 1, data 2 and data 4 were calculated over here using the Euler method, RK2 and the RK4 method. And when I execute this, I am going to produce three list plots comparisons or three plots where I am comparison, comparing the data from each of these methods with the, with the analytical solution. So let me go ahead and execute that and the output is set of three graphs. So, this is because the Euler method Euler method compares very, very badly. You see, Euler method gives shows that the oxidation keeps going indefinitely. This would have happened if omega was close to 1, but, but omega is actually 0 0.8. So, this is a bad result from the Euler method. The RK2 method gives a reasonably good result, but it does not show agreement in, in all the regions. But RK4 method gives a fantastic agreement. For the same value of n max. So now all these different three different cases were done for same value of n max. And we see that for same value of n max, RK4 gives a much better result compared to the to the RK2 method and the Euler method. Let's go ahead and check this out for uh, slightly different values. Let's go ahead and make Tf equal to Tf equal to let's say say 50 and n max equal to let us say 100. Let us go ahead and do this comparison. You see again for, for T f equal to 50 and max equal to 100 which is you can calculate h, h is 50 over 100 that is 0 0.05. For h equal to 0 0.05 Euler method is giving a poor result. Improved Euler method is showing some agreement in the beginning but then is deviating from the true solution. However, RQ4 method is doing reasonably well and as we increase this and max from 100 to 200, there will be improvement for both the RQ2 and the RQ4 methods. RQ4 method is now in perfect agreement, RQ2 method has improved but the Euler method is still not performing well. If you want Euler method to perform well, we need to increase the and max further. So, let us go ahead and check that out. So, what we will do is we will make an max 1000 and see how does that do for the Euler method in this problem. We see now that the Euler method is starting to give some improvement at least in the beginning, but then it again deviates away for larger values. However, improve Euler and the RK2 and RK4 do pretty well over here. Of course, let us go ahead and make it 10,000 and for 10,000 we see that Euler method starts to give decent results, but as time grows, the deviations also grow from the true uh, from the true solution. Let's go ahead and extend this comparison further by doing the error analysis in each of the three cases. So what we're going to do is we'll take this error mean absolute error that we defined earlier through this fun through this error function. We'll execute this error function, load it into the context. Now we'll look at how does this error scales with h? How does the mean error scales with h in these three functions? So this is our definition of the problem. 
So for the Euler method, we'll take Tf equal to 20. We'll calculate the table where the data set is obtained by using the Euler method and n max is changed as 10 to the power n, where n is 1 to 4. In so what do we do? We calculate data set. We calculate the h value and both these outputs are suppressed by 2. And then we output 1 over h times the error after comparing it with the solution. So when we execute this, you see that the, the error divided by h becomes a constant. That's what we expected for the Euler function. The global error becomes a constant with h as h becomes smaller or n max becomes larger this converges to some number close to 0.14. So h becomes a constant, uh, uh, error over h becomes a constant that means the error scales like h or the global error scales like h in the Euler method. Let us do the same thing for improved Euler method which is done this code over here and I will execute this and this is the result we get in this case again what we have done here, we have taken the error and divide by h square. So, error divided by h square in this case becomes a constant close to 0 0.04. This constant is going to change depending on the method and the problem being used, but it will always be some constant. So, RQ2 method global error goes to h square. This is a validation of that. And for RQ4 method, we will take the error and divide by h to the power 4. When we execute that, we see that this number converges to some number close to 0 0.002 or 0 0.003. So, in RQ4 method, we find that the error does scale like h to the power 4, which is what we expected. Let's do the comparison for fixed h. That is, in these cases, we were changing n max and therefore we are changing x and we are looking at uh, h and we are looking at how does error scale with h. Now, we are going to do is we are going to fix the value of h and see for what value of n max we are going to get results in each of the cases. So, we will we'll, we'll take n max equal to 1000, tf equal to 20 and h as tf over n max. So, and then we will calculate uh, data 1, data 2 and data 4 using the Euler RK2 and RK4 methods. When we do that, we see that the h value is 0 0.02 and the errors for this fixed value of h that is step size is fixed. The error in the Euler method is 0 0.0029, 0 0.003 or 10 to minus 3 is of the order of 10 to minus 3. For RQ2 method, this error becomes of the order of 10 to minus 5 and RQ4 method, this error drops down to the order of 10 to minus 10. Again, this is of the order of h, this is of the order of h square and this is of the order of h to the power 4 h was 0 0.02 in this case, it was 10 to minus 2 order, this is slightly less than 10 to minus 2 order. So, this is order h, this is order h square and this is order h to the power 4. We can also do the timing analysis, see which of these methods is fast, how fast each of these methods are. So, for that we will use the timing function, built in timing function in Mathematica. So, first what we will do is we will tune the value of n max for each of these cases so that we get approximately the same error. So, that what we have what I have done here is I have played around with these values of n max so that I get the same error in all the three cases. So, this will require you to play around a little bit with n max. When you do that, you see for when I take n max equal to 30,000 for the Euler function, I get an error of, of 10 to minus 5 and for RK2, I get an error of 10 to minus 6 for 2000 points and for RK4, I get an error of 10 to minus 6 for 100 points. So, what I have done is, I have tuned all these three methods to get an error of same order. Uh, error in the Euler method is slightly higher in order to improve this further, I may have to go to slightly more points, but that does not really guarantee an improvement, but we can try this out. Let me try this out for 40,000 points. And this is still running. There we go. Okay, there's some improvement, but not the error is still of the order of 10 to minus 5. We need to probably, you know, in order to actually get to the order of 10 to minus 6, we may have to increase it further. 
if we are lucky that might happen so let me go ahead and make it uh, 80,000 and this is going to take some time to run you can see that it's still running so let's wait for this and see if there's some improvement and this is actually running because the first step has 80,000 points that's that's what is taking time you have to run the for loop for 80,000 points and for the uh, Euler method, it's going to be pretty fast or improve Euler or RK2 is going to be pretty fast because it's 2000 and RK4 is going to be extremely fast. So there we go. We are done with this. So still, you see there's not much of an improvement. We couldn't really go down to 10 to minus 6, but this is, this is 3 times 10 to minus 5. We will stick with that, but you see this is 80,000 points. So let's go ahead and compare the timings. So here, let me go ahead and compare timings for 80,000 and still running. So we're going to wait for this to finish and approximately my belief is this is going to be something around 10 seconds. It looks like it's significantly more than 10 seconds. right looks like it's even more than 20 seconds there we go so it's 46 seconds it took about 46 seconds to take to do 80,000 steps using the Euler method to get an accuracy of 3 times 10 to minus 5 now let's do this for rk2 method where I get an accuracy of 4 times 10 to minus 6 with 2000 points so let's execute that and you see it only take about 0 0.03 seconds and for RQ4 with 100 points, which gives me the same accuracy, this only takes about 0 0.003 seconds on this computer. So RK4 method is about 10 times faster than RK2 to get the same accuracy. And RK2 is about a thousand times faster than the Euler method. So we see that there's a significant improvement when it comes to times when we're using the RK4 method. And that is why we often just stick to the RK4 method when we are solving ordinary differential equations. In fact, RK4 method is considered as a gold standard in order for solving ODEs to achieve both the high accuracy and high efficiency. High accuracy means that I can get accuracy of order h to the power 4, global error of the order h to the power 4, and high efficiency means I can do this in less number of steps. That is, my code is going to do less amount of computation and I am going to get high accuracy. So RK4 method is considered as a gold standard and this is the method we are going to use in studying all the other problems related to ordinary differential equations that we are going to come across in this course. You can go ahead and play around with some other examples of the differential equation and we will see you next time with more examples with implementation of RK4 method.